In this workflow demonstration, a fan-out wafer-level package with two die is mounted on an organic substrate. The design is defined in Expedition Package Designer and is transferred to Flowtherm where it is thermally analysed. Specific design modifications are made that then substantially reduce its operating temperature. Starting in Flowtherm, the EDA bridge application is opened. With a range of EDA data formats supported, an ODB++ representation of the fan-out wafer-level package exported from Expedition Package Designer is selected. U1 and U2 components represent two CMOS die. They are selected and a silicon material is assigned to both. The percentage coverage of copper on each of the redistribution layers is extracted from the ODB++ data. Instead of the copper being assumed equally distributed over that layer, a refined thermal representation of its distribution can be controlled by use of a slider bar, in this case a resolution sufficient to resolve all the pads that will connect to the C4 bumps. The same approach is taken for the bottom layer, with a resolution selected to resolve all the microbump connection points. Once the ODB++ data has been thermally prepared, the thermal model of the fan-out wafer-level package is transferred to Flowtherm. Whereas the ODB++ data just contained an XYZ size of each die, a more refined thermal representation is achieved by first defining a lumped representation of the metallization layer on the flip side of the chips, set to 5 micron thick with an appropriate material assigned. Similarly, the power dissipation is defined in the active layer of the die, assumed also to be 5 microns thick, and the active layer located between the metallization layer and the rest of the silicon. The interconnect layers, C4 bumps, micro bumps and so on, are automatically created from a CSV definition of their locations from Expedition Package Designer. The locations of the connections for a nominated reference designator are read in conjunction with the type of pin geometry, size and material. A neutral format flow XML file representing the C4 bump array is automatically created that is then imported into Flowtherm. An underfill material covers all of the C4 bumps. This process is repeated for the other CMOS die. The two die and associated objects are then Z-shifted so that the underfilled C4 bumps sit between the die and the top of the redistribution layer of the fan-out wafer-level package substrate. The microbumps connecting the fan-out wafer-level package to the organic substrate beneath are again automatically created. This time a spherical representation is chosen for pin geometry, with each solder ball 200 microns in diameter. When imported, they are automatically located on the bottom layer of the fan-out wafer-level package. The organic substrate is imported into the EDA bridge application and again, the top and bottom layers are slider bar processed to resolve their copper distributions. 
The A0 component that represents the fan out wafer level package is deleted as its thermal model has already been defined. The organic substrate is transferred to Flotherm and the soldable grid array imported and located. Other mechanical items that are not part of the Expedition package designer definition are created in Flotherm. A five-sided aluminium lid is graphically created over the entire package. Its Z height is defined as well as its thickness of 0.3 millimeters and an aluminium alloy material assigned to it. It is then located to sit on the organic substrate top layer. To improve thermal performance by supporting a heat flow path from the top of the two die to the aluminium lid, a thermal interface material is added between the top of the two die and the underside of the lid. The thermal environment in which the model is to be solved is defined via three heat transfer coefficients that describe the effectiveness of heat removal from the top, bottom and four sides of the package. In this case, it is assumed a heatsink on top of the package provides a much higher peripheral heat transfer coefficient than the other five sides. A 3D thermal solution takes approximately one and a half minutes to complete until such time as all key temperature locations have settled to steady state values. There are a number of ways to inspect the thermal results, to both observe operating temperatures, but more importantly, to understand why the temperature increases are as elevated as they are. The center temperature values in the two active layers are annotated. A 2D temperature plot shows the temperature distributions throughout the package. Disabling the display of geometry above the plot enables the full temperature distribution to be observed. Temperature rises occur due to some level of resistance along the heat flow paths. By visualizing the heat flow paths, an appreciation of how the heat leaves the package can be gained. In this case, some heat flows directly from the active layers back through the silicon die through the tim and out through the aluminium lid. Most of the rest of the heat passes down through the two substrates, then back up through the lid walls and out through the top of the heat sinked package. In fact, 96.5% of the dissipated heat ends up leaving the package through its top surface. The thermal bottleneck parameter is a unique post-processing feature of Flotherm. Looking at its distribution identifies directly where the heat flow experiences the resistances that result in elevated source temperatures. In this model, the thermal interface material and the underfilled C4 bumps are the primary bottlenecks in the heat removal paths. Doubling the thermal conductivities of the TIM material and the underfill material in Flotherm's command center window enables this parametric variant to be quickly defined and solved. A 13 degree C junction temperature decrease is seen by making these two very specific adjustments to the model design. Understanding the architecture of heat removal enables design modifications to be quickly proposed and confirmed. Knowing where best to make remedial design modifications is at the heart of a digital twin-enabled design process.